What's up, everyone? Tyson, uh, like I said earlier, Seinfeld is my favorite show, so this is amazing. They hooked up in the right place. It's great. Um, so I'm going to talk about designing with your user, uh, some techniques to move quickly from concept to uh, completion. And, um, you know, there's usability testing and whatnot. You come up with a design and then you put it in front of your user and you're learning. And you do that again after talking to all the users. This is a quicker way to like shortcut getting into that uh, complete state. So the agenda, talk about an intro on me, the problem that I uh, was tasked to solve, uh, particip participatory design, and then rapid testing. So like I said, I'm Tyson Reader, senior product designer. Um, been doing design for a while, love it. Uh, so I was at Flywheel for a while, and then we got acquired by WP Engine. Um, and it's been, you know, it's Great acquisition, great company to work for, a lot of the same values, it's been awesome. So I've been there for five years, uh, six years in September, which is a little hard to believe. And before I start, I really need to give a huge shout out to Grace Bile. Um, she's my user experience researcher. We're fortunate enough to have user experience researchers to partner with. And so they find the users to talk to, they'll be able to, someone else that does that, but they work with them set up all the users, help me like set up the mod guide, moderation guide, like figuring out what we're going to ask, what we're trying to learn. Uh, so she's amazing. Okay, let's move into the problem. Um, so in our portal, which is like our user facing experience for our users, today we don't have, which by the way, WP Engine does uh, manage WordPress hosting. Um, so one of the things our customers need is metrics on, you know, how their site is performing, how their client site is performing, whatnot. Um, so the, the how might be would be like, how do we display metrics to our customers and help them better understand how their site is performing? And then also like, what is important to our user? Uh, how can we best like present that data? There's a lot of different ways of doing data visualization, you know, how, what, what works best for them to solve the problem? solve their problems and understand how things for me. And of course, it's going to jump out of order. All right. I shouldn't use. All right. We'll just, we'll just uh, oh, I love big ones. But if you miss a connection. Um, OK, we'll go this way. Uh, so what is important to our user? How can we best present their data? Um, so now we'll move into participatory design. Um, participatory design is a collaborative design approach that involves the users in the design process. Um, so usually you kind of, you go and design, go in front of users, learn. This is more um, giving them the canvas and I will look at yeah, like this isn't them doing your work. This is them like uh, getting their thoughts out and we're learning how they're thinking about things. Um, so participatory design for this project. So, yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Uh, basically what we did was we had a bunch of metrics that we thought were important to them and things that we were able to surface to them. So we put some cards there and we did this in Miro. Uh, remote sessions. So we had all that over here. And then we had another stack that was different ways of displaying data. So there's different cards for all of those. So bar chart, horizontal chart, whatnot. And so then what we have the user do we get a going page is uh, just kind of put those metrics together and see like how they're thinking about things. So this is what um, an example of what that looks like. So they put four web vitals at the top, they put error rates next. Um, these are the kind of gauges, percentage of things that would help them understand how to take in that data. Um, and then we sticky notes on you know, what they're saying in the moment. And so we can take all that and then help make design decisions. So another thing, like you're looking for trends, like so you're not like, you know, one person does this, let's really focus on that. What are the trends across all of them? Six out of seven participants put an overall performance score as one of the most important metrics. Okay, that's something we need to focus on. And you kind of like see how it breaks down from there. <clears throat> so what we heard from users is in order to have a successful performance dashboard, 
these are the things that they would need to have after kind of taking all that data in. They need transparency and visibility with metrics. Pretty obvious. But they want to be able to see those metrics and then use those to diagnose the uh, issues. They also need opportunities and recommendations. And this is where the meat of the thing like fits together. Every person. You can give me as much data as you want, but if I don't know how to fix the thing, I'm not technical, I don't understand, you know, like, okay, I don't know. It's not loading fast because you're loading it to a bin, like you could lazy load in images or whatever. Um, that's a bad example. Uh, but they want to be able to know how to fix the thing, not just here's the metric. And then the last thing is they're going to need support and guidance. And this one's tricky because obviously we don't want a lot of people flooding into our support queues. Um, but one way we can, you know, help. Help solve that is by having help docs and giving lots of content around like why, what the metric is, and then the where it came from and how we're calculating. Okay, let's move into rapid testing. So another Grace introduced me, so she introduced me to participatory design, and then she introduced me to like rapid testing. I don't think that's the official term, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Um, so basically you're designing, come up with your design put it in front of a user, and then learn from that, and fast revise before the next user. Um, so the courses like the wireframes? Or we, or we yeah, you could like, be, like, what's the test? You could be all the way down to wireframes, it could be a sketch, like literally anything. Um, if it gets the idea across and what you're wanting to learn, then you just kind of throw it in front of some users. It's so like traditional usability testing I've done, it's more about like, I click here, it goes here. This kind of thing, you know, like more focused on the journey. And then also usually you do a bunch of testing and then you take that back, revise, and then you do a bunch of testing. What this is, is test, revise, and keep that cycle going. Uh, and then you synthesize the data. So with rapid testing, we were able to get results in one week six participants, which is enough to be uh, statistically significant if you see a lot of trends across 50 minute sessions. And we would always like start with user research questions. What's your role? How do you think about um, metrics? When you say performance, what does that mean to you? Always kind of start with those kind of questions to learn how they're thinking about performance in general. And then we showed them the design and we learned to revise. Okay. So what this looks like, uh, at a very zoomed out view, is on the left, that was the first design. And you can see how it iterates across the designs. I'll focus in on some specific things. Um, but yeah, you're learning along the way. So I tested with Grace one day, revised, moved next day. And luckily, they were spaced out day to day, gave me time to do the revisions. But they're quick revisions, like just different ideas to try. Um, so what we first put in front of users, you know, it looks pretty, looks pretty polished, but we made sure to like caveat, like, hey, it's nowhere near done, it's just a concept. And so we, yeah, threw that in front of users. What we learned is, like I said, overall performance score from the previous learnings was the most, like, most important thing. But when we just have a number and, uh, you know, there's just a number, then below that, you'll see we have the Lighthouse performance score. I don't know what Lighthouse is. That's pretty much the standard to run a performance test on your page. Uh, and you choose what page, use a browser extension, spits out all these metrics, and your things you know, fix, and how your site's performing. So that's what the Lighthouse performance score is doing. Well, when it's close, when there's numbers close to each other, and they are saying kind of similar things, like are those related, whatnot. Um, so kind of jumped ahead, but like, and I'm just paraphrasing kind of what we learned. Uh, but is that number the same as the performance score that I'm seeing? And like, how is that calculated? So the next iteration, um, we tried something more where it was not a number; it just needs improvement. And then this is your site's running really slower than eighty percent of WP engine sites. Not the best wording, but something to throw out there to just like. Hey, this is kind of how you're doing in relation to others. 
Your site sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have that, but they did. I don't know if the company was <laughs> as well. Uh, <laughs> so then I also added some just explainer text of like how we calculated this site um, performance. Then we kind of adjusted it even more to kind of take away the you know 80% and give them more of like a scale of like where on slow to fast, where do you land? This is still rough design, obviously not final. Next thing we show, or they pointed out, is slowest pages and slowest plugins are extremely important for the same. Like they put that very high in their ranking. So we probably need to give so <laughs> slowest pages and plugins are huge. Um, so we probably need to get that more prominent. So I made that out as two columns, moved it up the page, um, made it so you can scroll inside there, see a bunch of, see a whole list. Um, next thing was the site health snapshot. So what user said there, so I'm not really sure what these metrics mean. What is a good score? They have nothing to like compare against. So what we did here, um, yeah, I believe design, no, it's still, still a work in progress. Uh, but we added descriptors about what each of these mean, and then we told them the last update, but then uh, for this one, and I'll carry that through, but good is below 500 milliseconds. So that helps the user understand, oh, 1,169, I'm way over 500. There's a lot of work to do here. <coughs> So then I said, you know, recommendations and opportunities was a huge thing that users wanted. But you can't give ample space to a recommendation or opportunity on this page that has all these metrics that just gets too much. So we came up with this idea that we can attach to the lot of data uh, blocks where we say, hey, we have two recommendations. They hit the more information and we have like a panel slide out. Now, what users loved about this, that other tools don't do great, is we tell them what the problem is, and then we tell them how to fix it. And we write it in layman's terms. Very easy for them to understand. We're still figuring out how we're going to do this, <laughs> but the idea is there. People love it. We need to work towards it. Um, and then they can get into more details. All of them said, I need to be able to dig deep, like get into, you know, the the nitty gritty of why we're telling you that. So that's something we'll have to work into. So I said, I really like those, they tell me what the problem is. I know exactly how to fix it in layman's terms. Okay, let's move to the solution. Um, so again, kind of rough, starting to get more polished, but you can kind of see how all that feedback fed into the design. This is where I'm at right now. Uh, you know, we're showing them the good, showing them the spectrum, um, bringing a little bit more attention to the lighthouse things, uh, ability to dig in on everything, put some time, uh, showing even like when certain events uh, happened, again, with the two recommendations, tying it to here so they can learn more about what they could approve, uh, approve on improve on, <laughs> uh, and then adding in these information icons um, so that when they hover over those or click, they can learn more about what does slow pages mean, what does slow plugins mean. And then moving down the page, we got the site health snapshot again. Again, lots of information icons. Um, and saying last update date, that was another thing we heard was Okay, this was my last score, but when was that score taken? I need that, that context. So why am I telling you all this? Um, this process was kind of new to me, and it was, and it, it seems a little uncomfortable to talk to a user, change the design, talk to a user. But you, I think you can make a, a good guess of if one user is struggling on this thing, this is something I probably need to address for the next instance because it's something that most likely other people will like. So some educated guessing. But it's a really quick and easy way to learn fast and get to a solution quicker. And like I said, it only took a week. So if you can get a week of time, granted, I had someone helping me 
schedule the interviews, and that is a big chunk of time. But if you can, you know, get that set up a little bit before one week of testing, you can save a lot of time and money <laughs> by uh, testing your assumptions from the summit. So you can use this process to move quickly and make sure you're building the right thing for your use. I probably have a lot of extra time. <laughs> but any questions, yeah. feel free to uh, fill it up. Yeah. Was this uh, an enhancement to an existing dashboard or a, a new product or what was they started to play? Yeah, so this is completely new. We didn't have uh, hardly any metrics within our portal. Um, so we knew this was something we needed, it like a very high initiative to like get some of this information out. I'm still actively working on this, but I wanted to share like the process of the research. And um, yeah, brand new. Uh, so a lot of assumptions and tests and thoughts. And, yeah. and then you said you have a UX researcher that helps you. Yeah. And so a lot of the time is recruiting. Do you have like a panel of customers or some way to get those users quickly into your studies? Yeah, I think they reach into um, current customers, if that makes sense. Sometimes it's like, okay, we want somebody that prospect. isn't a user, they're a prospect, or they left the W uh, you know, Insta or some other, some other thing. But, um, but yeah, we reach into customers uh, that we already have. Uh, send out screeners to make sure they fit the right persona of who we want to test. And yeah, we're going to go from there. It's good. Then they use like Calendly so they can help. They can say, like, hey, between these times, I'm available. And so that the user just picks a time slot and okay. set the interviews. Sometimes you have to incentivize, but you have to be careful about incentivizing because. So people will just jump in purely for the incentive, and they, they'll just kind of, yeah, they'll not give you new information that's really helpful. Sure. As a designer, does this process change at all if the feature you're working on is a paid feature or a just general availability? Um, I'd say we, we typically do this for everything. Where, I mean, maybe not this exact process, um, it's paid. I'm, I'm sure we're you know doing more in depth research and testing a little bit more just because there is money involved. Um, there, there's still talk about you know whether or not it's a big thing or what, but uh, it's still pretty early. Um, but yeah, I think we always try to you know test our assumptions. I will say if it's just like a small enhancement, we might not uh, because we can make some educated guesses. They don't have a whole lot of designers, so like time is spread thin. So does that even enter into your conversation as a designer, though? About uh, this paid or not? Yeah, I would say there'd be more prior priority around the things that are paid, yeah. but uh, a little bit more time put in. So yeah, I think I think it's something, and then also you got to think about you know we have different personas and audiences that use our tools and what they need. So thinking about you know, what, who needs what, uh, an agency might need something different than a freelancer. And so, yeah, I think uh, priority kind of gets, probably gets set based around, any, like I used to be on local, which is a free application. We just kind of did this stuff, but it wasn't like high priority. This is a lot more high priority. Well, the beauty is it scales well. How many iterations, how many users, mm -hmm. right? You could do a fast in 30 in a day, or you could spend weeks and months on that. Exactly, yeah. And like, I guess I would say if it was paid, you would definitely, um, you'd put more time into it. So you'd have more iterations of this testing and whatnot. Uh, which I should mention, this just got me to this point. But now as I build out more pages and like the click-throughs and stuff, I'll be doing usability testing also. It's just to make sure that UX is all polished. Uh, so right now we know the concept's polished. You know, about the effects of the pages. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry. How do you use uh, that value of uh, the work of the panel? So, how do you have this dashboard in terms of work with your side of the Yeah, yeah. So, I guess the thing I didn't touch on a whole lot was we've done research on lots of different projects along the way. And something that always needs to be surfaced is the recommendations. 
they trust us to be like the guided source uh, for information. So they help. They're like, you guys know what you're talking about. Tell me, you know, guide me how to do this the right way. Um, so that, but then also we had more research specifically around so talking to users and understanding their needs before we move into this like actual like they want to be like. What's your structure like for that? Did you have a health club? Yeah, so we're we have a UX team and UX researchers, and so we're each put on a specific product or initiative, um, and then kind of just we learn the priority of the different things we need to work on. But it's nice. Like I'm focused. We have this new things concept owners. I'm focused on performance throughout our application. So that means you know if. Uh, another team member is working on that. They know that they know to come to me to kind of like, let's talk through how it works through the entire thing so that one person's not doing a different thing. Our person starts doing it because we need to ask. I answer your question. Oh, yeah, you kind of do. No, no, that's good. Uh, Corey? Yes, how do you get um, your user that you're working with to think imaginatively, thoughtfully, as deeply as you do? Yeah. Um, is there like a warm up period? Do you ever get somebody who's just like, I guess that's fine. Oh, that's fine too. You know, shockingly, <laughs> not really. Like, okay. I, I'm just, like, our users are very engaged. They like, really enjoy talking with us. They're fantastic people. Like, they, and they want to contribute. You know, this is the tool they're going to use that's going to make them money for their clients. And uh, they can use these performance. A lot of people said, hey, I could. Put this into a report, which I might stuff like that. Um, give that to my client, and then hey, this is what I'm doing for you. Look at all this performance gains. Like maybe this is a place I could help focus, and so then maybe they get more work and they go on a retainer or something like that. So they're very invested in it. Okay. Uh, so I don't think I see that a whole lot. I'm sure in other industries that might be a little tougher, but. Uh, well, I would say it, it, the answer is in, in the visuals. You showed back at the beginning, you get card sorts. Mm -hmm. You're not asking them to imagine from nothing. You're giving them mm -hmm. specific That's stimulus to yeah. have them share their thought process in responding to that. So you have the grid of like, what do you want to see first? Mm -hmm. And how do you want that visualized? Right? You're giving them stimulus. Yeah. Talk us through how you would want this to be. That's a good point. If we didn't give them anything and we're just like, blue sky, tell us what metrics you want, like, which I did, we did have a card of something else. So they could fill in another metric if they And then you say, well, why did they choose a bar chart instead of exactly. the data chart? Yeah. And you get a lot of feedback. You have the trends of what are people most interested. Yeah. And then you zero into that specific information element and get really deep on specifics, like what wording, what... Yeah. Yeah, no, you know that I. That's a good point. That like you don't just let. <laughs> we're gonna give them a blank page and like what metrics do you need? What you know that would have probably not yielded a very good result because it's it's just so endless. Uh, when you source candidates to be testing your user experience, um, I imagine you uh, select ultra levels of users, like someone who might have not seen it before, as opposed to someone who does get good feedback. Yeah. The second part of that question is this cycle they have had this set of users. The next time you fix my like, Google Ears, they have like, a different pool? Yeah, I think it, it depends on the thing we're trying to test. So, like, something that we need to test that is going to be specifically for agencies and not a freelancer, we'd be looking for those agents to do that. But we'd also want to ideally get a sampling of, like, are they very technical? Are they less technical? This one, yeah, is kind of like a cross section. Um, there's definitely less technical people that need this, and that's where the recommendations and opportunities become very important uh, so that we can tell them, like, that's very much You mentioned the screener. That's the survey you use to select. So let's say you want to recruit 10 users. You want yeah. three agency, three novice, and four experienced users. Mm -hmm. That's how you, the, what is in the screener helps you get the yeah, it's basically a survey, and we can weed them out if they don't match. Then okay, thanks for your time, but you're, you know, <laughs> we'll talk to you. Yeah, this is kind of a, a, an offshoot from that question. You seem to be becoming aware of, I guess, neurodiversity, for lack of a better term. Yeah, we process information differently, respond colors or contrast. 
Was there any attention paid to that anywhere in the process? Yeah, so doing accessibility on data and metrics is very tough. It's something that we want to strive for. But I will tell you, like, color contrast, we, we test and we try to get as close to AA as possible for the tag, um, which is accessibility sort of thing. So everybody can experience it at the, at the same. They can get the same information as anyone else can if um, they have to narrow um, But yeah, uh, I would say, you know, like those tool tips, they're going to have to be navigatable through uh, keyboard. And those oh, are the color contrast for sure. I think that's the Okay. Thanks, everyone.